Okay, so we've got three vectors, vector A, B, and C, and I'd like to add vectors A, B, and C together to get some resultant vector. Uh, what we're going to do as we do this is find the x components and y components of all three vectors. Once I have the x and y components, then it actually is really useful for finding a resultant vector for all three of them, and I'll show you why this is true in a, in a second. But let's go through the mechanical process of actually finding the x and y components, okay? Before we do that, though, I need to give you some magnitudes and some angles so that we can actually find the x and y components of these vectors. And the x and y components of the vectors are really, you know, the, the horizontal part of a right angle triangle and the vertical part of a right angle triangle. All of these angled vectors can be turned into right angle triangles if we just find the x and y components. So this little cross here is to indicate where the vector begins. This little cross here again for that vector and this one here. The magnitudes for these vectors, I'm going to make, nice, just to make it nice and simple, I'm going to make each of them have the same magnitude, 10.0 meters. 10.0 meters and 10.0 meters. And this should also sort of highlight the fact that three displacement vectors all with a magnitude of 10 should never add up to 30 unless they all happen to be going in the same direction, right? The answer is not going to be 30 if we go find the result near. That's, that's gobbledygook. Um, so in terms of directions, 30 degrees relative to the east, so east 30 degrees north. Um, I'd like to do this one south 40 degrees east and this one is going to be due east so I'm not going to add any labels on there it's just indicated that it is going straight east is that 40 for B? yeah 40 degrees south 40 degrees east for B now if I'm going to find X and Y components it's actually kind of useful to draw these guys tip to tail Okay. So I'm going to do it sort of larger here underneath. Here's my first one. Uh, here's my second one. And here's my third one. Okay, 10 meters, 10 meters, and 10 meters. And this is delta dA, delta dB, and delta D C. And I want to map out what my game plan is here first. According to our little instructions here, if we find the X and Y components, somehow it's going to be helpful for finding the, the resultant. Okay, and I want to show you how that is, is helpful. The X compon component for triangle A is this here. The Y component for triangle A is this here. The y component for triangle B would be this. And the x component for triangle B would be here. Is there a y component for triangle C? Is it a triangle? Just a horizontal line, OK? So all of these angled vectors can be reduced down to triangles, so long as they're not you know, straight x, y uh, vectors. All right, so finding the x component and the y component. One more piece of information we know is that this is 30 degrees. We know that this is 40 degrees. And I'd like to find some, some values that I would like to call, well, delta D AX, delta D BX, and delta D CX. I'd also like to find some values that I'm going to call delta D a Y day and delta D B Y and of course uh, there is no Y for the, the third one and I'd like to start off with an organizational system as well so my organization orga organizational system that I, I would recommend and you don't have to do this you don't have to do anything really I'm just saying if you're somebody that has a hard time organizing yourself this may be useful for you. You're always going to have X and Y components for every angled vector. So I'd recommend that you start off with a, a T-chart that, that has X and Y values, because you're going to find the X and Y component of each of these vectors. And then you're going to have vectors A, B, and C. So you're going to find the X component of vector A and the Y component, the X component and Y con vec uh, component of vector C, uh, B, and the same for C. 
at the end, I'm just telling you what the game plan is, we're going to find the total for all the x's, so that's going to be the resultant for all the x values. And we're going to find the resultant for all the y values. And if I look at my original picture, how do you suppose we're going to find the resultant for all the x values? Can you see if I add up delta dAx, delta dBx, and delta dCx, can I just add up all the x values, kind of point it in the same direction? Check out what's going to happen with the delta dy values. One of them is going to go up, one of them is going to go down, and one of them is going to have nothing. Can you see that I can add up all the delta dy values as well? This is what a resultant is. You add up all the values that are going in the x direction, and you add up all the resultant values in the y direction. And then we're going to deal with them separately again at the end. Okay? So the name of the game right now is just get the x components and the y components. Once you do your calculations, put them into an organizer. But you still have to show your calculations. And then we're going to add them together. Okay, so I'm going to take a break right now. I'm going to let you guys do the calculations. Oh.